Okay, so now we're going to look at the equation that describes longitudinal waves in a bit more detail to try and get a really good physical understanding of what's actually going on. So to start with, let's have another look at the longitudinal pulse moving through that slinky coil. Pay careful attention to how the white ribbon moves as this longitudinal pulse travels along. Okay, so hopefully you can see that the white ribbon is moving forwards and backwards in the same direction as the pulse travels along the slinky coil. Now that you've seen that, let's have a look at a graph which will clearly show you the relationship between the cosine function going up and down and the actual movement of the particles from their equilibrium positions. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the equation S of xt. Now, S here describes the displacement of the particles from their equilibrium positions. And it's equal to S max. So that's the maximum displacement, the amplitude, times cos of kx minus omega t, where k is still the wave number, 2 pi over lambda, and omega is equal to 2 pi f, is the angular frequency. So to start with, let's consider the particles all in their equilibrium positions. So if there's no wave passing through the medium, then say the medium's air, these particles are going to all be evenly spaced. So I'm trying to represent them with these little green dots here. I'm trying to draw them as evenly spaced as I can. Okay, so now we're going to apply our wave described by this function here to our medium and consider how it makes these dots move. So let's call this axis here of our graph the s-axis. So this tells us how far at each point the, point the particles move from equilibrium. And this here is x. And we can choose any time. So to make it easy, we're going to choose time is equal to zero. Okay, now what we'll start by doing is plotting what does this look like on these axes. So at t equals 0, x equals 0, we've got cos of 0, and cos of 0 is 1. So we're going to start at a point s max, and eventually we'll get down to s max minus. So we'll oscillate between s max and minus s max. Okay, let's draw our cosine curve. looks a little like that. Um, that's the best I can do freehand. And now let's apply this to the particles making up our medium. So let's choose another color, now say blue, and consider how each of these particles have moved. So the particle here at the origin has moved S max in the positive direction. So positives to the right. So this, the particle has moved from here to around about here. This particle has moved almost the same distance, not quite. We, if we measure this height, it would tell us how far it had moved, again, in the positive direction. This one, slightly less, but still in the positive. A bit less again, but still in the positive direction. Much less in the positive, just a tiny bit in the positive. And if we had a particle in the medium at this point here, where the cos curve crosses this s axis, so s equals zero, it wouldn't move at all. Now on the other side here, this point here has moved in a slightly negative direction. So it's actually moved slightly to the left. This one again, to the left, to the left, to the left. And this one's probably moved the most to the left. This one then has moved to the left and to the left, but getting lower and lower in magnitude. And this one here has moved away. So you can see here, there's not many particles, whereas here there was lots of particles close together. This one here has moved in positive direction, positive, positive. This one here has moved a big positive direction. This one here, positive, positive. 
this one here has moved in the positive direction and positive direction and this one here hasn't moved at all then this one's moved in the negative direction so we've got lots of particles close together here and here and spread far apart here so these places where the particles have moved close together as the wave has passed are known as a compression there's one and here's another compression And then the particle, the areas where the particles are spread far apart are known as rare refractions. You can see that the compressions and rare refractions happen when this cosine function is equal to zero. So these are going to happen when um, the kx minus omega t is equal to 90 degrees or 270 degrees. Or if we want to do it in radians, pi on 2 radians, or 3 pi on 2 radians, because you can check on your calculator, cos of 90 is 0. So that's where um, the compressions and rare refractions happen. Now we can also think about what happens to pressure. Pressure is actually high when the particles are close together. So this is high pressure. And then pressure is low when they are spaced apart. So here's another high pressure region. So you can see that the pressure is going to be high when the displacement is equal to zero, also low when the displacement is equal to zero. And then when this displacement is maximum, that's when these particles are fairly evenly spaced. The spacing is about the same as it was without the wave there. So this is average pressure. And average pressure. So this pressure is actually 90 degrees out of phase with the displacement function. So we know that sine functions are actually 90 degrees out of phase with cosine functions. So we can actually write down an expression for our pressure using this relationship. If the displacement of the particles is given by this relationship, then the change in the pressure as the wave passes is given by the maximum change in pressure times sine of kx minus omega t. Because then when the cos is zero, the sine, we have 90 degrees or pi on two in here for kx minus omega t, and that is equal to one. So that's going to give us our maximum pressure there. So if you want, you can look at the derivation that shows that the maximum pressure is equal to rho v omega s max. I've hidden it because it is a bit beyond this course but if you want you can reveal that and watch it here rho is the density of the air v that's the wave speed omega that's the angular frequency which is given up here so the 2 pi f and s max that's the amplitude so you do need to be able to substitute into these equations it's just you may choose to watch the derivation of this equation or not. But now we can see how the displacement and the pressure are related to each other as a sound wave moves through a medium. Okay, so now we've considered what would happen at one point in time and shown how the graph relates to the actual movements of the particles. Have a look at this moving picture now, which shows you how the pulse actually moves through a medium.